Hi, my name is Louisa and I'm a harm reduction health educator at Maine General. This video series covers injection technique and today I'll be talking about inserting the needle when mainlining. So first, let's go over some needle basics. Needles with a thinner tip or called higher gauge create a smaller puncture wound when used for injections. This reduces the risk of infection. Thinner needles are also better for injections into smaller veins like those in your hands and feet. The drawback of higher gauge thinner needles, however, is that they can clog a lot more easily, so you shouldn't use them with thick drugs like black tar heroin. For more information on needle gauge size, check out our video in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. Needle length is also really important. Longer needles work better with intramuscular injections or muscle popping, and for people who want a mainline but have a lot of scar tissue. Longer needles might make mainlining a little bit trickier, however, for people without a lot of scar tissue, because these needles make it easier to pierce completely through a vein since they're longer. Shorter needles are usually better for people who want a mainline and don't have concerns about scar tissue because they can be more precise with their shot. You can also learn about needle length in the gauge and length video that I referenced earlier, which is again located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist. In terms of the actual injection itself, it can definitely be hard to find a vein. Fortunately, there are a few maneuvers that make them a whole lot easier to access, including using a tourniquet, attracting blood to an injection site with physical movement, and warming the injection site. So tourniquets work by pinching veins and causing blood to pool up in them. They create a blood bottleneck, so to speak, and make veins bulge. Although there's no magic number, you'll probably get the best results if you tie a tourniquet about two to four inches above an injection site. If you're injecting into the inside of your elbow, for instance, you're probably going to want to tie your tourniquet right about here, where your bicep is. If you're injecting into your hand, you want to tie the tourniquet a little bit above your wrist. Your goal with the tourniquet is not to cut off circulation. So if you start going numb or turning blue, remove the tourniquet immediately. We offer both latex and non-latex tourniquets at Next Step Needle Exchange. Another technique that you can use is physical movement. When you move a muscle, your body automatically tries to send more blood to the area around it. So flexing your bicep or hand when you're injecting into your arm or hand can help send blood to those regions. You can also use gravity to let your, and let your arm, if you're injecting in there, hang down at your side, directing blood towards the injection site. Lightly slapping the injection site is another option. Your body will also automatically send blood to an area that gets warm, so you can soak the area around an injection site in warm water to make veins pop. When you find an injection, injection site and are ready to go, make sure to insert your needle bevel up. The bevel is the long pointy tip of the needle as seen up here. You should always inject in the direction of blood flow, which is towards your heart. Insert the needle at about a 15 to 45 degree angle and remove it at about the same angle. This helps decrease the risks of track marks and bruising. At Next Step Needle Exchange, we offer many supplies like cottons, needles, sterile waters, tourniquets, alcohol prep pads, BZK pads, and triple antibiotic ointment. These supplies help create a safer, cleaner environment for drug use, reducing the risk of infections and other problems. Thanks for joining me today, and I invite you to check out more of our videos located in Maine General's Harm Reduction YouTube playlist.